All right, so our second tutorial today uh, will be run by Luca Nutricati from Durham University uh, to be on quantum energy. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to do this tutorial. So I will start with, uh, this is my plan. I will start with a brief, a very brief introduction on quantum annealing. It's basically what Steve said uh, this morning. Uh, so it will be very brief. Uh, first of all, we start from uh, the point one, point one. 1.1, so what is quantum annealing? So to make a long story short, it solves uh, optimization problems, okay? Hopefully through quantum tunneling. Uh, it uses um, the adiabatic theorem. So uh, the, 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 the problem with that is the fact that the, you cannot embed whichever problem uh, you want in a quantum annealer. Because uh, this kind of machine, this kind of machines solve only um, Ising model. So you need to reduce whatever Hamiltonian you have into an Ising model. And we will see how it, how, how it works. So let's start. A quantum annealing solves problem converting it to an Ising model model. Okay. In particular, uh, in particular, the Hamiltonian, which is embedded in the machine, is the following. There is a first term, which can be written like that, with a coefficient a, which depends on s, and the s, we will see in a second what it is. So we have, of course, the we have an, uh, an auxiliary Hamiltonian, which is a starting Hamiltonian. Which depends on the uh, on the uh, Pauli matrix on a transversal coordinate plus a second term, which we can call, uh, which has a coefficient which is called b, and we will see in a second what is b, and then there's the the, the Ising model. So the H and the J's, so this, the biases. And the, the J, J couplings. Z, I, Z, J. Okay, this is called the problem Hamiltonian, the second one. And it's the basically the, the problem we want to solve. So it works like that. So with, with this coefficient, the story is the following. So we have um, we want to plot how this coefficient varies uh, when we vary s. This is we can measure it in energy. On the y-axis. So what we, we do is we turn down the a coefficient. At the same time, we turn on the b coefficient. So this is a and this is b. So through the adiabatic theorem, if we do this kind of um, procedure uh, sufficiently slowly, the adiabatic theorem, if we start from the problem, uh, sorry, the, the, the initial Hamiltonian, which is A, when S is zero. So S is a function of time. So this is the increasing time along the S axis. So as the time will increase, the coefficient A will turn down 
the initial Hamiltonian and will turn up uh, and B will increase, so we'll turn up the turn on the, the, the problem Hamiltonian. And hopefully we will end up in the minimum of the problem Hamiltonian, which is the problem we want to solve. Okay, this is very briefly what is uh, quantum annealing. Uh, we shall use in this tutorial simulated annealing because otherwise it would have been a mess. So we'll be use simulated annealing. Okay. The other thing, uh, the other thing you need to know to do the, the, the exercises uh, is how to reduce an Hamiltonian. So I recall Steve already said it this morning, but I recall it. So suppose we want to find the minimum of this very trivial, very trivial Hamiltonian, which contains uh, a three linear coupling. So lambda, which is the coupling strength, tau one, tau two, and tau three, where tau i's are binary variables, so zero, one. Of course, this is very trivial because the minimum is uh, tau one or tau two or tau three equals to zero. But this is trivial, but we cannot embed this in a quantum annealer because it contains a three linear coupling. So what we do is the following. So we choose a pair, or, or tau one, tau two, tau one, tau three, or tau two, tau three. So for uh, simplicity, I will choose tau one, tau two. I call the product of tau one, tau two, A1, A for auxiliary. So the, 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 the price we need to pay if you want to um, quadratize the Hamiltonian is adding auxiliary spins, okay? So the new Hamiltonian, I'll call uh, H uh, Ising. Is lambda, then we replace tau one times tau two with A1. And then there is the uh, tau three. And the other part we want, we need to add, and this is the other price we need to pay, is the, uh, this additional part of the Hamiltonian. Minus A1, A1 plus, plus three. A1. Okay, this is the quadratized Hamiltonian. And we'll, you will use it during the, the first exercise. Okay. So, indeed, this is, uh, we can go directly to the first exercise. So, this is warm. Uh, you can you can try and check, but I mean this is explained on the slide by Steve. So actually, this is not uh, this is not the only this is not the only tool you can use. So you can write generally an expression uh, with an auxiliary spin and some coefficient. So then you impose that the degeneracy of the vacuum is preserved. And then, uh, yeah, the degeneracy of the vacuum is preserved, that also the position of the vacuum is preserved. And then you will get some constraint on these numbers and you will get some coefficient and one minus two and three. So this is, this is a way to prove it. When I say, sorry. Ah, sorry, the minimum of the, sorry, sorry. The minimum of the, of your Hamiltonian. Yeah. 
yeah, okay, but this is, a, I mean, you can do, you can try this as a, I mean, every time you have a, a, a cubic coupling, you do this procedure, you find that the, the, you, you're a Hamiltonian. You, you don't know to, to you, 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 I mean, just to, uh, just to find this expression, you don't need to know the minimum of the Hamiltonian. Let's, let's put it another way. You start from this Hamiltonian, okay? You know the minimum, okay, of this Hamiltonian. You do this procedure, you find this new Hamiltonian. You can check that the minimum, the position of the minimum is the same and the degeneracy is the same. So if you have a gigantic Hamiltonian, whenever you have a trilinear coupling, you replace, you do the same procedure, and this doesn't, doesn't make any difference in terms of position of this, the minimum of this precise term, not the minimum of the entire Hamiltonian, which you don't know actually. Okay. You, 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 do, you do this procedure piece by piece in the Hamiltonian. Okay. And you. Sorry, say it because you do piece by piece so you preserve the same structure piece by piece. You can, you can, uh, you can see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Then you do another reduction. You can see uh, it is uh, automatic. I mean, in the code, it is uh, an automatic uh, procedure, and then you will see that it works. Okay. So, indeed, the first exercise is to quadratize this Hamiltonian, and you will have to do uh, in a convenient way because we want uh, we want to minimize the number of auxiliary qubit. So I, yeah, you can use whatever you want, pen and paper, Python or Mathematica to, to reduce it. And you need to check that the position and the degeneracy of the minimum is preserved. And for homework, you can do a, an automatized procedure um, to, to reduce whatever Hamiltonian you, you have. So I will uh, give you some time and let me know if you have problem or anything. The reduction you can do by, by hand actually, pen, pen and paper, to check if the, the degeneracy deposition is preserved, you may need something on code. Okay, I can give an example of of solution. Um, there is. Okay. So the most this is a, a two-step reduction actually. So you need to uh, replace two times uh, some pairs. So the most convenient way to reduce the number of auxiliary qubits is to replace tau two times tau three uh, as a first step. So you need another, you then need another auxiliary qubit to quadratize because you have a quartic uh, Hamiltonian. And you should end up with something like this. So here I, yeah, here I choose uh, tau two and tau three, and then tau one, tau four, reduce. And then you have two auxiliary terms with 
lambda, of course, because this is a two step reduction. Uh, and then I checked in the most, uh, I mean, a stupid way because I just replace all the possible combination of uh, tau one, tau two, tau three, tau four, and the, yeah, in the, the first at the first step. So you see that the minimum of the Hamiltonian is minus one, and it comes when uh, tau two, tau three, and tau four are all one, and tau one is zero. Then I have this. Should have done this in a most convenient way, but this is the fastest way. Uh, so I checked all the values of uh, possible, all possible values of tau one from tau one to tau four and the two auxiliary qubits. So, so the, the second step refers to the uh, quadratized Hamiltonian, and you can see that the minimum is still there. So when here. So the arrows is here, minus one is the energy. So the, the values of the minimum of the Newtonian is preserved. And the position is zero, one, 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 which is the correct one. Okay, so this, uh, this is from uh, tau one for two tau four. And you have this uh, one zero, which refers to the auxiliary spin. But the auxiliary spin you can, uh, you don't have to do nothing with the auxiliary spin. You can just read from the annealer the, the, the spin that you, you need to, to, to find your, your solution. And that's it for the exercise. Another thing I wanted to show is uh, the following plot. So here we plot uh, the number of auxiliary qubit uh, needed. Um, to reduce a uh, generic Hamiltonian of order n. This, is, this refers precisely to the trilinear coupling. And you see, uh, here we uh, apply the greedy algorithm because actually the, the, the problem of um, um, related to the, the quadratization of the, of the generic Hamiltonian so the problem to find the minimum number of auxiliary qubit uh, which reduce the Hamiltonian is uh, indeed already NP-complete. So this is uh, already NP-complete. In this case, we actually uh, applied a greedy algorithm, so a heuristic algorithm, and find that the number of auxiliary sp uh, spin required uh, grows as a square root of the number of trilinear coupling. Of course, it saturates because now the, the, the Newtonian is quadratized after a certain range. Okay, then the second problem refers to the taxi cab. Um, if you go to the problem sheet, you can download here from a Dropbox uh, folder. And you will have something like this. So this is the example code I will show you. So the first part refer to the required module. So you need to, the important thing is you, you need to install this new packet with uh, the, the command the command I can write here is, you've already said this this morning, but you write nil. This is the common. Um, then you choose the D wave simulated annealing sampler. Okay, so this is stimulating annealing is no longer uh, actual uh, real uh, quantum annealing. So uh, then there is a function that maps spin to qubits, so minus one, one to zero, one. So this is straightforward. Uh, a function that converts binary, uh, uh, convert from binary the representation. So uh, taking an array 0, 1, 0, it returns two correctly. Okay, the other part is to actually automatize the reduction procedure. So you, you don't need to touch this part because otherwise you, can, you have to do this by hand. It's, uh, 
never ending. Uh, then there is a um, function that you need to test your solution. Um, in this very trivial example, I'm just uh, solving this Diophantine equation. So very trivial. Okay, then the, the, the thing that you may uh, edit later. So betas, the number of qubits for each variable, number of variable, uh, an eventual shift in the binary representation. So uh, this would be something like, uh, uh, yeah, actually a shift in the binary representation. Uh, you can see, uh, you can see, you can see it later to be more clear. Uh, this is the largest exponent that appears in the Hamiltonian because at some point when you have the Hamiltonian, you will have something like uh, uh, something like tau some um, tau i to the n, and you need to since tau is either zero or one, you can replace it with tau i. Okay. So the the code must know the largest coefficient in order to automatize this procedure. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, would be two, because this is, this is a quadratic, uh, this is a quadratic uh, Hamiltonian at the end when you, when you square it. Okay, and then it's quite straightforward because you have binary encoding. You can ignore this part, this box here. Then you have binary encoding. So if you need to modify the, the, the encoding, you just need to edit these parts. Okay, then you have a list of variables, uh, which, uh, sorry, a list called variables, which contain the binary representation of the, uh, the variables that play a role in your, in your Hamiltonian. So we have a two, only two variables because this is actually the Hamiltonian, which contains two, two variables, Z1, Z0, Z1. Um, then you construct the Hamiltonian as a simple polynomial, squaring the, 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 the list of equations. And then you need to, as I said, uh, yeah, as I said, you need to substitute in the Hamiltonian, the Z with its binary representation. And you can do this with this problem here. So SQ is the is the Hamiltonian squared. Okay. So you replace power now, as I said. So tau to the n can be simply tau, and then it print the Hamiltonian in terms of uh, x, and the x are the my binary by binary values. Okay, uh, binary variables. Sorry, so they can be zero or one. So this is the final Hamiltonian. As you can see, this is already quadratic because the problem is quadratic and doesn't need any reduction. You can extract the, the coupling as a dictionary. You don't need to, to touch this part. Also this one, you don't need to touch. So you can, this is the part that reduced the Hamiltonian to a quadratic one. And you can see the number of zero spin is zero because the problem is already quadratic. Then you construct H and J's, mapping these to a Nising model. You don't need to touch this part as well. Okay, then you do actual the actual sampling, calling the using simulated annealing. And when you print, you have a bunch of spins. They are listed, and the first one is the minimum that the annealer has found. You then read the, the spin. You convert again in, uh, in numbers. You have a bunch of solution, of course, the trivial solution, because the two numbers has to sum up to six. Okay. So the to find taxi cup numbers, you need to add, of course, you need to edit this part because you have now the, that, uh, an equation which is a bit different and you need to impose the somehow the the constraint that is the, 
the constraint which impose that A is different from C and D, or you can do similar for D. Okay, and this constraint has to be imposed at the level of tau somehow. And of course, if you have, okay, the last problem, uh, you can get started with that and then continue later. Uh, it's related to continuous optimization problems. Okay. So you have this function. The only thing you need to do is you, you will need a slightly different encoding for the X variable. So you can't encode this as a binary, a standard binary variable, but you need something else. It's called a continuous binary representation. So you have to figure out what is the binary representation for this X uh, variable. And then you just need to put the, the function in the, as a loss function, that's it. Okay, and that's it, uh, all I wanted to show. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. And that's it. You have an homework, by the way, to automatize the reduction. And that's it. Thank you very much, Oda.